Okay, continuing with number 18, which ions are spectator ions? So you have to write the ionic equation to find that out. So Ba positive 2 plus 2i minus plus 2k plus plus SO42 minus. You can split these up because it says Aq next to them right here. And if you look, they're strong electrolytes. This one's a solid, so keep it together. Basso. And then this one's going to split up two because we have 2k plus and 2i minus. Don't forget to distribute the two into each thing, and they're both aqueous. So the k pluses, they uh, cancel. The i minuses, they cancel. So we're left with the Ba plus two. And the SO42 minus going to the basso right here. So my spectator ions are the I minus and the K plus. 19, same kind of question, except for we've got a different equation. Aqueous, 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 split those. So Mg plus 2 plus 2Cl minus plus 2K plus plus CO32 minus. Split those, are all aqueous. Keep this together. So Maco right here. And then split that. That's 2K plus and 2Cl minus. So there's my spectators right there that are going to cancel with one another. So Cl minus and uh, K plus. Uh, I guess that was that was uh, 18, 19. And then what type of reaction is this? This is a precipitation reaction because we get a solid right there. I guess I answered two questions with 19. Number 20. Uh, the solution is prepared dividing, uh, dissolving 20 grams of sodium hydroxide in water to a total volume of 0.5. Formula weight is, what is the molar concentration? So molarity is equal to moles divided by liters. We're going to look for molarity. So molarity is equal to the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that are in there. So we need to convert from grams to moles. 20 grams. Grams in the position where it's going to cancel is the moles of NaOH in a new set of units. Add up NaO and H on the periodic table, and it adds up to uh, 40 grams. They give you that in the question where it's 40 grams per mole right here. So we have 0.5 moles. That's our mole. And then divide it by our liters, and it tells us that it, the total volume is 0.5. So 0.5 divided by 0.5 is 1, so it's a 1 molar solution. 21. 0.5 molar solution has a volume of, the formula weight is, what is the number of grams? So now we're using the molarity triangle to find moles. Moles are equal to molarity times liters. Our molarity is um, 0.5. And our liters are 0.25. So uh, we're going to end up with uh, 0.1 uh, moles. And then multiply that by 40 grams in one mole, which is my molar mass that's given to me here. So we're going from moles to grams. And I believe we end up with uh, 5 grams of NaOH. 22, write the balanced reaction, which sodium bicarbonate reacts with nitric acid. So sodium bicarbonate is NaHCO3, bicarbonate ion, you can find on the back back here. Um, it's probably over here, bicarbonate HCO3 minus 1. This is going to be a special one when reacting with acids, because remember bicarbonates, uh, sulfites, hydrogen sulfites, when they react with acid, always form a gas, so it's a gas forming reaction. So we'll end up with NaNO3 to start with, and then we'll get some H2CO3, but this immediately decomposes, and this forms water and some carbon dioxide gas. So this would be our balanced chemical equation for that, since that decomposes right away. Which gas is produced in a reaction of CaCO3 with hydrogen bromide? So once again, a carbonate or a bicarbonate. These are going to be gas producers, and the gas that's produced is uh, carbon dioxide gas, just like in this one. And which gas is produced with uh, CaOH2 and HCl? So let's write that reaction quick. CaOH2 and HCl. Swap the cations, we get CaCl2, and then we get some H with some OH right here. That's going to be a liquid at room temperature, and this is going to be aqueous that will dissolve. And so it looks like no gas is produced in number 23.
the following reactions, calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction right here. So now we have two reactions and we need to manipulate them to get this one. This is called Hess's Law. I always say start with uh, the goal reaction first thing and see if you can find it in one of these two reactions. And I can. N2 plus 2O2 goes to 2NO2 and write the enthalpy just as it is because I didn't change anything about this reaction and that's negative 66.4. Remember they're all in kilojoules so that will be our units at the end. Next thing we need is some O2 and you can see there's O2's here and there's O2's here so since there's in both places let's just save that for last. And then we need some NO and you can notice NO is right here it's on the wrong side of the equation so take this reaction and flip it or write the reverse of it and so it would be 2NO2 goes to 2NO plus O2 and the enthalpy for this one would be 114.2. Notice how we changed the sign now because we reversed the reaction. Now when you add the two reactions together you can notice that the two NO2s go away. The O2, one of them goes away here, one of them goes away right here and we're left with our goal reaction, the one that we want to know right here. Uh, right here, our goal reaction. So to, to make that happen then we have to add the two enthalpies together and if we add those two together we end up with 47.8 kilojoules positive value because this is positive, this is negative. Number 26, which region of the EM spectrum is radiation with a wavelength of 650 nanometers? So there's no memorizing going on in this one. you got to get your uh, cheat sheets out here that you get on the exam. And so you've got to find 650 nanometers. So you can see here's the wavelength in meters. Here's, uh, let's see, the wavelength in nanometers right here. So 650, that'd be 10 to the second is 100. So this would be a thousand, so 650 would be right in this region here, which looks like it's right in the visible spectrum area or so. So you can see here's 700 nanometers, here's 380 nanometers, so it's right between there, it'd probably be like right in this area right here. So it's a visible spectrum. And of course there'd be no, no, uh, no expectation that you memorize where those are, you'd get these on the exam. Of the following, blank radiation has the longest wavelength. So you can see there's like a little diagram here of wavelengths. If I zoom in on it, you can see that wavelength is really short right here and it gets longer and longer and longer and the longest ones right here are radio waves. So radio waves would be the answer to uh, 27E. The bond energy of molecule X uh, is 258, which is the wavelength of the photon that has just enough energy to break that bond in X. So the equation that you want to find right here is the one that has to do the wavelength of the uh, photon, so right here. And we've got energy in there and then we've got Planck's constant times the speed of light right here and you can get that value right here. That's the easiest one to use to just get straight wavelength. So wavelength is equal to HC divided by E. H times C is 1.9865 times 10 to the negative 25th joules times meters. And then our energy right here, this is kilojoules per mole. So we want to know the amount of energy per photon, not per mole of photons right here. So let's take our 258 kilojoules per mole. And for every one mole of photons, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those. And then we want it in joules because this is in joules right here. So for every one kilojoule, there are 1,000 joules. And if we do that, this piece right here, and put that answer in right here, and divide those two animals right there, 
Um, and then, I'll just put that in a big giant parentheses like this. Uh, we change it to nanometers. For every one meter, see how we're in meters, there are one times 10 to the ninth nanometers. We want to go to nanometers. We'd end up with 463 nanometers. Um, it uh, switches the wavelength of the photon. So here's our wavelength of the photon. And then the uh, short way to do it without using the um, uh, mathematical equation now would be to use the electromagnetic spectrum chart right here. And the energy we're given is 258 kilojoules. And so on here, let's just zoom in and let's find kilojoules. So kilojoules per mole right here. And we're given 258. So here's 100. Here's 1,000. So 258 would be right here. And then if we wanted the wavelength, we'd go up here and we'd get right into this area. And it looks like in nanometers we'd be uh, around 1,000 or so, which um, would be a little less than 1,000 because here's 100. And we had uh, about 500 or so, so we'd be in the ballpark anyway. I mean, this shows a little bit higher, probably like 800, and we calculated uh, 500 or so. But it would get us close without using uh, all the math that we just did right here. Now, you're welcome to do the same math for number 29. And if you did the same math for 29, except for this time you used 1302 right here instead of 258, put in 1302. Uh, this time you'd end up with a wavelength of 92 nanometers, but you could do the same thing on the electromagnetic spectrum chart where you'd go to 1302 on here for kilojoules per mole, zoom way in. Uh, here's 1,000, so 1,300 would be somewhere like right here. And then follow that up right here, and we'd be somewhere between 10 and 100. Um, so, you know, 80. And uh, we had 92 right here for our answer when you did the math. All right, more problems on the next video.